Hi there, in today's video we're going to take a look at fragrance olfactive families. Now for those that are new to uh, kind of perfumery, whenever a perfume is made it's kind of housed in a particular um, group, you know, so if it's a very floral smelling perfume it would usually go into the floral group. In this video we're going to go over the main groups, not the subcategories or delving too deep, just the main and most common ones. And as you can see here we've got uh, citrus, floral, fruity, oriental, chypre, fougere, woody and gourmand. So let's take a look at citrus first. Now citrus is a, it's a pretty old fragrance family that until recently consisted mainly of kind of freshening eau de colognes due to the low tenancy of citrus scents, very volatile. Citrus fragrances are old and abundant. Its compositions are based on sort of lemon, orange, bergamot, grapefruit. You know, it, it, they're sort of added with floral notes for women or kind of aromatic tart notes for men. Now this fragrance family can also be um, called just simply fresh and then broken down further into like fresh citrus, fresh aromatic. So although it's um, I'm, the, the family is actually called a citrus, it can also be called fresh. Now I think these, as I said before, these fragrances tend to be eau de toilette or cologne versions due to the very short lived nature of citrus um, molecules. They're kind of like more for sort of splash ons. Um, ideal, you know, they're ideal for basically summer days. Some conjure up a kind of a sea breeze, bottled sunshine, and just you know a fruity, citrusy, fresh feel, which won't last that long, but uh, absolutely adorable while they do last. Now on to floral, very uh, very common in perfumes. This is the largest fragrance group. It encompasses numerous versions of compositions with a floral heart, freshly picked flowers, with aquatic green or powdery sort of nuances, as well as floral aldehydes and uh, floral fruities. Uh, a single sort of floral fragrance is dominated by a scent of one particular flower, such as rose, whereas a bouquet contains a combination of several flowers. Now in the past, um, I might sort of add, that a floral kind of uh, fragrance was classified as, as very masculine and a lot of men used to wear sort of floral um, based fragrances however nowadays especially in the west florals are kind of geared more towards you know a, a woman's sort of perfume uh, more of a feminine scent uh, obviously for myself if I like something I like it it doesn't matter whether it's heavy with florals or not but for the general kind of public, people not that into sort of fragrances or perfumery, a floral scent would be more geared towards a woman's um, perfume. Now on to another category, the fruity category. And the main notes in this particular um, category include things like berries and other sort of non-citrus fruits. This uh, group adds a sort of juicy quality to a perfume, almost adding a kind of a, gour a gourmand feel. It's not one of the most well-known sort of categories or, or um, highly used, but some perfumes, you know, they had a lot of sort of blackberry and things like that, and that would sort of class it into this particular category. So next we'll take a look at uh, the family called a fougere. So, fougere fragrances are one of the most popular uh, men's families. Um, these will often sort of contain lavender and oak moss. The term fougere, pronounced fougere, is, um, is French for fern. But uh, obviously ferns don't actually smell like this. The name comes from a fragrance called Royal Fern or Fougere Royale. This was one of the first fougere fragrances was first introduced in 1882. Fougere Royale completely revolutionized the world of perfumes and established, um, you know, how modern sort of perfumery is today. It was, you know, it was the first Fougere or fern-like perfume ever created. Um, and it, it obviously established this whole fragrance family. It's been revamped and in 2010, Fougere Royale was reintroduced to the market. 
Amongst um, other sort of notes, the you know the the fougere sort of feel comes from the lavender and the oak moss. Unfortunately, oak moss is now banned from use, as it is a, um, a dermal sensitizer, which basically means it can cause allergic reactions to a, a good proportion of people. So it's kind of been recreated synthetically but with lavender oak moss and patchouli you're getting that kind of fougere feel to a fragrance and so many men's fragrances now are in this particular family now on to a very popular one oriental now, oriental fragrances are dominated with things like amber and they're placed in a separate group thanks to the sort of combination of um, accentuated warmth and sensuality. Their bouquet includes sort of intoxicating and intensive substances such as musk, vanilla, exotic resins and sometimes some warm woods as well, although they are in a category of their own. Um, exotic flowers and spices. Now to me, um, oriental fragrance is probably best worn to, uh, around about the fall time. Their autonomous sort of colour and feel matches that sort of uh, particular season. It's a warming fragrance. I also think you could possibly get away with it on a balmy summer's evening as well. Um, you know, just as everything starts to cool down and you know, you, you're emitting all these beautiful kind of spices and eastern sort of resins and you know, I can really get carried away with um, Oriental sort of, you know, the description of them. Um, absolutely brilliant. I personally wouldn't wear them in the daytime. I just think they, there's just something about Oriental fragrances that just blend into the evening, you know, the, the kind of, um, you know, like I said, a balmy evening and, and sort of uh, in slowly drifting into nighttime. So next on the list we have Sheepra. Yes, it's pronounced Sheepra. Now this group was named after a perfume created by Francoise Coty, um, basically just called Sheepra. It was created in 1917. Sheepra means Cypress in French and this particular scent is kind of based on a harmony of oak moss, labdanum, patchouli and bergamot. Fragrances in this particular category usually start off with a citrus top note, but like said, um, will dry down to an animalic, mossy sort of base. Most of the ingredients are kind of from the Mediterranean um, and that sort of area. Now to me, a Chypre fragrance can be worn pretty much any time. I think it's very versatile the kind of citrus top and the mossy animalic kind of base it, it's just the fragrance for any sort of occasion in my opinion okay on to the next one so the next one is the um, woody family woods now you know compositions of woody notes in a heart of a perfume are usually accentuated with woody sort of base notes you know they're warm mysterious I think the most common wood has to be sandalwood and the best quality sandalwood there is is from the Mysore region of India, the Mysore sandalwood. However, there are plenty of um, sandalwoods being kind of, you know, artificially cultured and um, um, made synthetic. Now, although these are pretty damn good, you don't get the creamy quality that you get from the uh, Mysore sandalwood. Unfortunately, there's a lot of legislation going on now and it's becoming rather an endangered species so it's getting harder and harder to come across unless you're dealing with um, poachers or bandits. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the woody family is, is um, kind of based around, I would say, sandalwood and um, cedarwood and possibly thrown in with a few of the kind of roots and things like that. So on to the next one, the final one in this sort of um, list is a gourmand. So a gourmand fragrance is a perfume which consists primarily of synthetics um, and to be precise synthetic edible uh, gourmand um, notes such as honey, chocolate, vanilla, candy floss, candy. These sort of top and middle notes can be blended with uh, non-edible 
sort of notes, uh, such as patchouli or musk, um, they've been described as olfactory desserts. You know, they're called foodie fragrances. Um, these scents can be worn by men and women. Um, they are obviously very sweet. You know, you're getting things like honey, you're getting things like candy floss. You know, definitely synthetics. You can't make, um, get oil or essential oils from candy floss. And, you know, things like waffles and pastries and that sort of thing. And that is your gourmand. Not for everybody. Um, not everybody likes them. I personally do like them. But, um, you know, a lot of people don't tend to like those sort of very, very sweet uh, scents. Um, you know, a lot of coconuts and, in it, and vanilla and stuff like that. Um, and that just about concludes this video. Now, obviously, there is a lot of other sort of families. You know, you've got, you've got your kind of leathers, um, and all these can be broken down into subcategories floral, um, you know, you've got your florals, and then you've got your fruity florals, and then you've got your sort of, you know, and, and the list goes on. But this is your kind of meat and potatoes of the fragrance uh, families. So um, I'll catch you in my next uh, video. Hopefully, I'll be doing some. I'll be doing some more reviews. Um, but I wanted to get these kind of uh, educational videos um, done because I enjoy doing them and I enjoy sharing, you know, what little knowledge I do know. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll be getting back to doing some reviews. I think I've got uh, maybe one or two more of these lined up ready to go um, in a well nearly complete it should be so sort of published in a few weeks time and then uh, once they're out of the way I can concentrate on um, you know doing my fragrance reviews again and um, just occasionally you know essential oils I've got plenty of essential oils I'm trying to grow my collection as well because I think they're an essential part of actually doing the reviews um, it's the way I kind of train my nose to pick out what I believe to be in the um, in the fragrances that I review, and I'm trying to broaden my range with a few more kind of chemicals and you know aroma chemicals and see how they match up to the real McCoy and you know things like that. Anyway, before I waffle on too much and make this video too long, um, I bid you all farewell till uh, next time. Anyway, res remember to subscribe. Um, it's going in the right direction, but it's going slow. But um, we'll get there. Take care now. Bye. -bye.